hello, hello. Welcome back to our channel. Mm -hmm. We're the Bookshop Besties. I'm Carla. I'm Cleo. And today we are doing something a little bit different. We have not actually, funnily enough, done any sort of book review or anything before on YouTube. The Renovation Besties. Yeah. The DIY besties. Mm -hmm. The construction besties. <laughs> but now, a lot of you have asked us what some of our favorite books are, what's on our TBR. So today, I am going to be giving you some of my book recommendations. And then I am going to be sharing what's on my TBR for hopefully the next month or two. Mm -hmm. We'll see how fast. <laughs> That's unrealistic probably, but these are hot picks for the spring slash summer. And we figured the way we're going to structure this is one recommendation to two TBRs. Mm -hmm. roughly just because I don't have a lot to say about books that I haven't read mm -hmm. and I'm sure Cleo has a lot more to say about the books that she has so let's get into it first up I talk about this all the time on our discord this is Terry Pratchett's the we free men this is the first in the Tiffany Aging series it is about a young witch who well she doesn't realize she's a witch but then she finds out and she has all these amazing like powers within her but it's different from Harry Potter magic so I think it's a lot more I don't know it's funny to say realistic because it's a fantasy <sighs> she just kind of discovers that she's not afraid of things that like a normal little girl might be afraid of yeah she's hardcore <laughs> <laughs> so she like saves her baby brother in the very beginning of the book and then she meets these wee free men they're these tiny little blue men they're like a it's like a ragtag group of leprechaun -y type creatures <laughs> She goes on adventures with them and they kind of protect her. She just figures out her powers and what she's capable of in this one. Well, throughout the whole series, like she continues to get better and better at her craft. And it's just so good. I cannot recommend it enough. If you are a Harry Potter fan, I recommend this like tenfold. I prefer it actually over the Harry Potter series and I'm a big Potterhead. So that says a lot. Just the way that Terry Pratchett writes is incredible. He writes in accents and stuff, so it's really fun. Like you can really get into the character as you're reading it. He makes it so easy. So anyway, that's that. We awesome. free men. I still have to read these, mm -hmm. most of these recommendations. Yeah. Okay, first book on my TBR is Finlay Donovan is Killing It. So this is a novel by Ellie Cosimano and we had one of our patrons actually recommend this to us and apparently it's about a murder mystery novelist who goes into disguise to a coffee shop to work on her book and she gets mistaken as a hit woman um, and gets hired to kill someone's husband and so this is a whole like miscommunication accidental kind of mystery thriller and i am very excited about it because I feel like I need a good mystery that's not something so intense like Verity or um, that's gonna give me nightmares. Yeah. So that's why this is one of the books that I am going to be reading this season. The next one, similarly, is The Maid. Though I've heard this one is actually scary. Apparently it is kind of on par with Verity, but even creepier, but less spicy so let me know what you guys think if i was given the right recommendation or not but um apparently it's about a housemaid who like stumbles upon a murder and then kind of gets involved Ooh. from what i hear but i haven't even read the back so i'm kind of going into it blind again these two are very similar so i think i need to space these out mm -hmm. amongst everything else yeah this one's just gonna be a lot more humorous mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> funny smart cool. and twisty and surprising whereas this one is a delightful whodunit, so maybe it's oh. not as. A dead body is one mess she can't clean up on her own. All right. All right. It's like a socially awkward maid who tries to get by mm. in life. So if you guys have read either of these, which one should I start with first? Ooh. And which one's your favorite? Also, if you haven't heard of this one, maybe read it too. Let you know how it goes. All right, my next recommendation. <sighs> as far as fiction goes, I'm going to say this is my favorite fiction book of all time. Wow. I love Neil Gaiman. So fun fact, Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett were actually friends. They wrote a book together, Good Omens, which became a show that is very popular actually. But Neil Gaiman alone is very much known for Coraline and American Gods. This kind of, it ties into American Gods, but I would say it's so much better. And I really enjoyed that one, but this was like, Maybe it was just at the time that I read it, but it felt life-changing. I swear, I know everyone's saying this now, it changed my brain chemistry, but it, it feels like it did. 
just the characters are so interesting and so fun and I think they all have like a good amount of growth and he explores things like ghosts and parallel universes, but in a really unique, interesting way. I wish I had better words for this, but it's just so, so good. And I cannot emphasize enough how much I love it and how much I think you should read it and how much you should read it. I know, it. I know, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I've read it, I mean, probably not as many times as I, as it seems like I, I should have at this point. Probably like six times. That's a long time. That's yeah. a lot of times. Hence um, the, the spine looking the way that it does. But yeah. Jake is taking a master class by Neil Gaiman right now. Oh my God, yeah. I have to do that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's like how he's like getting back into yeah. like writing and everything. Oh, and I can't I got wait. inspired for his most recent story. Was, oh, okay. You yeah, have to, then, yeah. You would have to read this as well if you have He might have already, okay. I don't know, but I'll, yes, I'll we'll recommend to it to him. Jake yeah. is my husband, for those of you who don't know. Yeah. Next up on my TBR is where the crawdad sing. I know I am late to the game. Have you read this yet? No. Okay. I know it starts off kind of rough. It's about this like recluse lady who something bad happens to her. But this author, Delia Owens, she is a biologist of swamp and marshlands. And apparently the way that she writes about oh. nature and like the swamps and the marsh is so beautiful and so descriptive that like that is one thing that everyone raves about mm. and I just heard it's a really beautiful book and there's a lot of internal things that in the movie was not reflected well okay. even though I've heard the movie does a good job mm. so I'm excited to read this mm. again seems like it might be a tougher read so if you guys have read all of the books that I'm about to please tell me kind of what I'm getting myself into mm. you know mentally with this so yeah where the crowded sing it's on my reading list especially for the summer it seems very fitting to read it in warm warm weather next up boys in the boat i saw this movie and it was wonderful i know it had mixed reviews but i really wanted to kind of hear the story about you know the guy who made it through to the olympics if you guys don't know it's about the olympic team a group of college-aged kids that were amateurs from, I think, Seattle, Washington, mm. and they made it to the Olympics during Nazi Germany, during Hitler's regime, and they beat the Nazis and everything, so it's like, obviously, that is history, so it's not quite a spoiler, mm -hmm. but what's special about this and why I want to read it is my grandma actually rode and was going to row for the Romanian Olympic team back in like the 50s, I want to say, mm. or 60s. Dang. And she was third, she was the third seat on the on the boat. And mm. so when she wa we watched this movie together with her and she was so, Aww. she was like, she knew, she remembers all the movements. Yeah. And it's one of the hardest sports ever. It's the most physically challenging, Dang. like physical sport. So highly recommend watching the movie and I'm really excited to read the book because as usual, I've heard the book is better than the movie. And these are both turned into movies, so. Oh yeah, it's fitting. Go. Okay, do we want to like break for something like funny? Like some, like we can like add in some like word from our sponsor. We don't have one right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you Maybe so that much. Could be you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you to our sponsor. Nobody. Nobody. <laughs> Thank you to our sponsor, Spare Time Books. Yes, <laughs> for letting us use their space. Yeah. Who wants to sponsor us? <laughs> now is your chance. Yeah. <laughs> Next up is The Stranger by Albert Camus. This is, I would highly recommend reading it in one sitting. How many I, pages is it? 123, and the last page isn't even a full page. And let's see if it actually starts on page one. It doesn't, so it's 120 pages. It's very, oh, Gosh, now it's been a while since I've read it. I read it last year and loved it. It also leaves you feeling kind of like, Ugh. I don't know, mm. but in a good way. I want to say it has kind of an open-ended ending, mm. but now I'm like, does it? <laughs> no, no, it must because it's like, it's very much like a philosophical fiction read. Provoked there's thought. there's murder, but it's not like a murder mystery though. It's just kind of like you're inside the mind of this man who's nihilistic or oh, what's the other one? Oh, oh my god, absurdist. Absurdism. Uh, okay. So it's just kind of like not so much what is the purpose of life, but it's more like I don't know, it kind of touches on that. It's hard to explain because it does make you think and I think I do think that everyone who reads it will have kind of a different, it, it'll bring out different feelings and beliefs in people, depending on, you know, your mindset and your values and stuff. Anyway, a lot of people are like, okay, this guy's a total psychopath, but I don't really think he is. But if you've read this, I would love to have a conversation with you about it. I think maybe I should reread it at this point. It's definitely like an easy read in the way that it's written, but some of the subject matter 
might make you want to like take a quick break, have some lunch, step away from it, watch like a funny TV show and then come back to it in the same day or something. But if you can read it all in one sitting, I highly recommend doing that. Next time I read it, that's what I'm planning on doing. It's weird. It's fun in a weird way. Very eloquent. Thank you very much. That's it. Perfect. That <laughs> reminds me of probably, and I, I feel like you should read William Gay's I Hate to See That Evening Sun Go Down, which mm -hmm. is one of my recommendations, but mm -hmm. it's kind of like that. Like you read it and you're like, this is so well written. Mm -hmm. It provokes so much thought. Mm -hmm. But also like, I need a shower after reading some yeah, of this, you know? Yeah. We are moving right along. I'm going to go into Wool. So for those of you who don't know, there's a show out called Silo. And this is the book in which it was based upon, first book in the series, so this is based oh. off of season one. I actually started reading this and I thought I read the whole thing, but I don't really remember what is in the book and what happened in the show. So I'm gonna reread this, and I think it was right after I had my face lasered, so I was like out oh, of it. Oh no. So um, this is technically back onto my TBR, so I am going to be finishing this. And also I read it on Kindle, which mm. I like my Kindle for certain things, but I read The House of Gucci on Kindle, and I just don't retain things that I read digitally. For those of you who have watched the show Silo, it's really good. It's a dystopian novel about the future if everybody in society was put into one singular silo, like an Ooh. underground silo. And there's only like 3,000 people or like whatever inside that silo and everything is grown there. Outside the, the air is poisonous. You cannot breathe it. And if, if you speak against the silo, you get sent outside Ooh. and then you clean the screen with wool so they send you out with a piece of wool and then everyone who goes out they see on the there's a camera outside they see the person like eventually asphyxiate because of the poisonous air but then there's rumors throughout the silo that maybe the air actually isn't poisonous and it's all a conspiracy theory and so it's one lady detective who becomes sheriff after there's so many murders through Whoa. the silo and she's trying to uncover is it actually poisonous outside is it safe what's the corruption going oh, on oh my god so gosh. it's very exciting that sounds wild yes it was a great show and it was a great book from what i remember <laughs> but again i'm gonna read it again and not be like out of it with my face bright off so let me know if you've read it on another note we've got Happy Place by Emily Henry. This one is just a fun summer beach read and I'm excited to read it because I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. And you know, who doesn't love a little Hallmark summer romance? I hope it's not gonna pull the rug out from under me because this is not the vibe I get from the cover, but also mm. those romance books, you know what I'm talking about? You think it's gonna be a fun, cheesy, good time and then like halfway through, it gets freaking crazy. Mm -hmm. So, so Icebreaker, we'll you know who you are. The Love Hypothesis. Mm didn't see that coming <laughs> at all. You didn't hypothesize that that I didn't happen. hypothesize that. I thought it was going to be a much different vibe. Okay, next up for my recommendations is The Bean Trees by Barbara Kingsolver. She recently won the Nobel, not the Nobel, oh yeah, Nobel Prize. I almost. Wow, Peace Prize. Nobel, Nobel Peace Prize? Pulitzer. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah, that's a great This book. won the Nobel Prize. Whoa. Yeah, Nobel, Nobel, Nobel Prize, Prize in, in literature. literature. Yeah. Okay. So she recently won the Pulitzer Jeez. Prize for Demon Copperhead. Mm. But I haven't actually read that one. But while I was waiting to get my hands on a copy of that, I picked this one up. And again, it's a pretty short read, but it is so beautifully <laughs> written. And you just go on this lovely adventure with this girl and the family that she acquires throughout the book is just very moving. There are probably a couple of tear jerky moments that I remember, but overall it's very feel good and definitely worth a read. It was probably my favorite book that I read last year. Five out of five. I don't have much to say about some of these because I don't know much about them. So Serpent and the Wings of Night. Now we're getting into kind of like your YA, NA, fantasy romance well actually I'm just kidding not I must betray you but that's what this is so apparently if you like Court of Thorns and Roses if you like Fourth Wing if you like gosh even the Cruel Prince I think yeah has all the fun of a Court of Thorns and Roses and then also Jennifer Ella Armantrout's from Blood and Ash you'll like this I've heard that you start crying through this book which is not what I was expecting or am expecting but apparently it's really good I've heard it's kind of spicy 
I'm not sure, let me know. All right, now we are in nonfiction. And actually all of my nonfiction have a very similar vibe. Starting off though with Peter Mayle, A Year in Provence. Sorry, I'm like covering your face. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't mean to do that. That's, First of that's all, the thumbnail. It's just <laughs> yeah. like my favorite cover. <laughs> First of all, I just love this cover. This is also on my TBR. I literally got this at one of those little free libraries, yeah. which is so fun. So fun. So it's about this man who moves with his wife to Provence, and he actually has several books about his experiences there. This one I really like because it takes you through what a year is like there. So it, it is January, February, March, and it's really cool. I've been reading it again this year along with each month. Of course, they talk about the weather and the environment, but as well as just the way that the culture there varies throughout the year. When was it written? Oh, when did it come out? 1989. Wow. Yeah. Oh, it's the same age as the bookshop. Oh my gosh. That's so cute. Yeah, Julia Child loved this book. It also says stylish, witty, delightfully readable, which I 100% agree with. It's just really fun. It's like you are going on vacation there without the cost. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> okay, The Inheritance Game. This, I've just seen it on Book Talk. It's YA, I think. So I don't know what it's about. It's got chess pieces. No, it's not. It's got ballerinas and oh it does have chess pieces on nice. the front so i'm going into this i don't know idk no idea no clue yeah head empty people came in asking for the final gambit which is the third book i'm guessing like right after it came ah. out so i'm going to maybe read this when i'm feeling something a little lighter than some of these options a little bit more fantasy have you guys read this is it good is it worth my time this one i'm very excited about this book it's called i must betray you by ruta sepesh sepets the Petsy. Yeah. I, that's how I would pronounce it in Romanian. Yeah, but in my brain I say Sepetis, but I don't say that's right. That could be. I think she's Lithuanian, so it would probably be pronounced more similarly to oh. Romanian. If you're Lithuanian, how do you pronounce this? Yeah. Are we close? <laughs> yeah. And then, Clea, you've read a book by her before, right? Yeah, so I've read Out of the Easy, Between Shades of Grey, and, oh, there's one more and I have it on my shelf at my house, but. And she's good. Yeah, she's really good. So Cleo saw this book. I wasn't working at the shop that day, mm -hmm. but someone brought this in. So this is actually about the Romanian revolution that overthrew the communist government back in 1989. Mm -hmm. And it's about a writer who has a passion for writing, but in the during the regime, he couldn't find any work for it unless he wrote for the mm -hmm. government. And so he's kind of planting seeds of rebellion through his writings and kind of, you know, making that ultimate sacrifice of what does it mean to be part of a revolution? And so if you notice the cover, he's carrying the Romanian flag with the hole in the middle. The hole is actually, this is the symbol of the revolution because they cut out the hole of the, um, or the emblem of the communist oh, party. So that's why wow. that's like the symbol of rebellion in Romania. So yeah, this happened in 1989. My mom was actually part of this. Everyone she knew, her neighbor in the block that they lived in actually was the first one to get killed by the government in the square oh. he was shot down in front of everybody and that's what sparked the whole revolution oh so, my god yes in the in the hall in the plaza of the city that i was born in is one of the cities that started the rebellion it's called timishwara there's bullet holes and like the old architecture in one of the plazas from that firefight um there was tanks being rolled out in the street it was crazy and it's not really taught a lot Dang. in in yeah. our schools because it's not that relevant to you know it's not like germany it's not any big I guess it is a big country, but so yes, I'd love to talk more. I'm really excited for this, probably on the top of my TBR. The yeah. history of Romania is a pretty crazy one. I'm really excited. And I want to read this one too. This is Bucharest. So this is oh. like where it all kind of started. This is the parliament building. Mm -hmm. It's a big, big building. And they had, you know, they rolled tanks up here. And this is where they Dang. killed the dictator. Whoa. Crazy. Anyways, <laughs> on that note, you can go. <laughs> Next up is Epitaph for a Peach by David Mas Masumoto. And it is about this man's experience on his family farm. It takes you through all four seasons. And I wanna say it starts with him. Oh yeah, the prologue is about him finding out that like their farm has to be dug up or something. Oh. Again, it's been a while since I've read it. And so it's him trying to save this specific type of peach because it isn't one that is really sold in 
supermarkets. It's like a very special one that he holds very near and dear because he, you know, spends so much time tending to these trees and his orchards and it's just very beautiful. Is it sad? I just remember thinking that it was gorgeous. Mm. So there, there are probably sad bits. Yeah, this is another one that I should reread actually this year. I think the language and just the prose in general is really nice in this one. Mm. It just feels like it's you're- really cute. Yeah, you're just a part of this family farm for a little bit and it's very nice. I feel like I'm not using good vocabulary in this video, but that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Jennifer L. Armentrout, I read from Blood and Ash and I have the second and third. You also have all the books, unless you brought them back here to sell. I don't think I have all of them. I have the first one, I want to say. It's in hardback. Oh, then, the, yeah, the other ones are over there if we didn't sell them already. Oh, okay. were like, eh. Yeah, I haven't read the first okay. one. Okay. All right. Did you really like it? I liked it. Okay. I, it was very spicy, so I don't oh, want to like condone it too much. Okay, okay. But, um, so yes, from Blood and Ash, I read that. I liked it. Um, I was kind of on that like fantasy romance kick after A Court of Thorns and Roses. So this is Jennifer L. Armentrout's newest book. It came out in 2023. Nice. It's called Fall of Ruin and Wrath. This is giving, I don't know about you guys, this is like giving me fantasy 2020s book vibes. Like you yeah. see this and you're like, okay, I'm going to buy it because... I know it's got wings, it's got a sword, mm -hmm. it's got something and something, you know, of yeah. something and something. Like, yeah. Like we could be like bookshop of ivy and stars and it'd be yeah. like, boom. <laughs> um, so I don't know anything about this, don't tell me, unless it's horrible and tell me not to read it. Mm -hmm. Say don't waste your time because I will listen to you. Don't give any spoilers in the comments. No spoilers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even for these ones, because yeah. I don't want people to be interested in and see something in the comments that makes them feel like, oh no, what's the point? Yeah, like someone did that for me with Lessons in Chemistry. She's like, she came in here and she's like, have you seen the show Lessons in Chemistry? And I said, no, I haven't even read the book yet. And she's just like, oh, I stopped watching when this happened and just like Ugh. gave away. I was like, I, girl, that's so I just rude. said that I haven't read it or watched it and you just gave away and I told other people what she told me who said they had read the book and they're mm. like, that's such a big mm. plot point. Why would she do that? So that's messed up. Okay, my last recommendation for the day is another book about seasonal living. This one is called French Women for All Seasons, A Year of Secrets, Recipes and Pleasure by Mireille Giuliano, I want to say is how it's pronounced. She has different recipes for each season. And she just talks about the different open air markets and what produce and stuff they're able to get as well as her experience living in america because she did live here for a little while as a child and then came back to france and she talks about like almost like the culture shock that she experienced in both places and then as a grown woman she goes between paris and new york and she just talks about the differences between the two cultures and countries and I think it's very interesting and I also love to cook so I love that there are recipes and stuff in here. Um, I would say because these are my recommendations I give all of these books five out of five so if you have also read them I would love to know what you rated them as well. Thank okay. you very much. <laughs> my last book on my TBR and then I also rank these I guess in like terms of most excited to least excited. Mm -hmm. This is The Atlas Six, again by Olivia Blake. I've seen this on Book Talk a ton. It's no idea. I know it's fantasy romance, sci fi hmm. situation. So that's that. And yeah, so I'm going to rate these on terms of things I am, I'd say it'd probably be like this, 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 this. This is my TBR list. Mm. This is how it's gonna go. Mm. So most wanting to read first, and then it's going down to, we'll see if I get around to it, but mm. it almost makes a nice gradient. Very nice. Yeah. Woohoo! Sweet. So thank you guys. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed this new type of video and we're excited to do the next one where we kind of switch roles. Mm -hmm. We'd love to know what's on your TBR, some of your top favorite book recommendations as well in the comments. So let us know based off of these stacks, what you think each of us would enjoy reading. Thanks again, you guys, for watching our videos and supporting us. It means a lot. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.